All right, guys, Aaron here, and today we're going to be installing a motion sensor light switch. Now, these are great for areas of the house where the light never gets shut off, or maybe an area of the house where, you know, you get a lot of cross traffic and it's just almost irritating to have to flip the light on and off as you go in and out of a room um, because you're not there long. So, a good place for me was the mudroom. And again, that's right off the garage. You come in from the garage and that light automatically turns on as soon as you open the door. That's a great spot for it. But now I'm going to be installing in the laundry room again a spot where for some reason the light doesn't get shut off very often um, so this will take care of that um, and I'm going to show you how to do that it's really not that hard um, so let's get going all right before we start tearing this apart let's go ahead and get our power shut off now unfortunately my panel doesn't have a label so I'm going to go ahead and flip the light on so then I'm going to look for a breaker that's going to be close so I know that my kitchen is close to my laundry room so I got kitchen lights up here. So I'm going to try that and see if that works. It's nine here. And that unfortunately was not the right one. So we'll have to try another one. Now, the other thing you can do is if you have an outlet in the same room, you can use our client tool circuit breaker finder and see if we can identify what the outlets are on. And then the, you would think that the light's going to be close to that maybe. May or not, um, you might have a light adapter for it as well. But this just might give us some idea. My laundry room is also close to my garage. So it might be on the same one as my garage. So we can try that as well, which is going to be 22. Let's try that. And there we go. We found this circuit and we flipped it off. It was actually on the garage. So like I said, it, it could be on several different circuits if it isn't labeled. Um, so, and they don't necessarily label every room. So you might have to look around for a bit. All right. So we know the light is off. So let's go ahead and remove the faceplate here. So yes, the light is off, which is a good indication that there's no power to the switch. Um, but I have seen situations where there's actually still power in the box. Um, and you want to make sure you got that circuit off as well. Um, so take your circuit tester, put it down in there on the sides. And that's again, may or may not tell you, you may have to test it again once we get this off. So let's go ahead and take this off and take the switch out. And again, we've got it out, um, but still you could have a live wire in the box. So your circuit tester down there, see if you get anything hot and I do not. So we're good. We can go ahead and start taking this apart. For this install, we don't necessarily care which is line and which is load. Um, so we can just disconnect these. Um, otherwise, if you do need to know, um, your best bet is to turn the power back on, flip this off. And then you can test each one of these. You can use a multimeter or just spread these apart like that, flip it back on, then come in with your circuit detector and just test each line. Just be careful when you do that because you don't want any sparks. You want to make sure everything's good here as well. Um, but let's go ahead and disconnect these. Also, not a good idea to backstab. Your best bet is to go either around the terminal or if there's actually a um, spot in the back there um, that you can clamp those down. This is just a backstab situation and I don't think it, it doesn't hold as well. So you're better off being able to have the ability to tighten these down with the screw, um, whether it's wrapping around the terminal or if there's just a plate right here that clamps it down. I'm just going to clip those because we got, I'm going to clip them because we got plenty of wire. All right, we'll go ahead and strip these back a little bit. And when you're stripping them, do not twist like this. Do not clamp down and then twist because you could cut in the copper here. Your best bet, just find the right one. So if this is 12 and you just pull it off like that, then you don't potentially cut the wire as well. All right, so from a wiring standpoint, we have a few different options here. Um, these two are hot wires. This is a ground. Um, this is a ground slash neutral. If you take this off, you can see it's white sheeting which makes it a neutral, um, but if you leave it on, it looks like a ground. Um, if you only have the two hot wires in the box, and that's going to be dependent on how the switch is wired to begin with, you're going to actually tie these two together with your ground in the box as well, if you have a ground in the box. 
if you have a neutral in the box and you want to look in the back here, because a lot of times that neutral will be wrapped up. There'll be a couple of them tied together or wire nutted together and pushed back into the box. So make sure you look for that because if that neutral is there, you want to use it. Now, as I said, there is a neutral in the back. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out, pull that neutral out, pull this off. And again, you'll see that's white for neutral. Take this off and we're just going to tie this in here. And you can wrap that around once. Usually that's plenty. Twist that down like that. And we want to see a little bit of a twist there. And then just push that back in the box. You want that back in the back, just like it was before. So push that back. Now we're going to take our hot wires here. And again, either one is fine. You can, you don't, you don't really need to twist this. Start twisting that down. And then you're going to see, usually when you see the two wires start twisting there, you're good. Just put them next to each other. No need to twist them. We're just going to stick them next to each other parallel. And then we'll put this on. No need to twist them together. Yeah. The nut will, the wire nut will twist them together. And again, you see that kind of twist in there. It's good. Then, of course, we also want to grab our ground wire out of here. Could have done this before. Again, same thing. You don't necessarily need a wire nut for this, but you can. You wrap this around like that. It's good to have one because it's just such a small wire. This will help keep that ground connected. Now, if you have a blue wire, um, you have a three-way switch. I don't need a three-way on this one. Um, if you do and you're using a three-way switch, I have some installation instructions up here to the right or in the description, and you can check those out as well. But if not, now let's just push everything back in. And just take your screws. I prefer to go back and forth. Um, let's just make sure it's set in there even and it's not tilted or twisted. Okay, and there you go. That should be in. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and turn the power back on, and then we can go ahead and program this for how long we want it to come, stay on, stay off, um, time out, things like that. So let's go ahead and flip that back on. All right, so we'll go ahead and flip our power back on. And as you can see, our light came on pretty much immediately. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you click that link below and become one. And if you're interested in watching the video on how to actually program this thing, make sure you click the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thanks again. Catch you on the next one.